As we count our dollars and aspire to bigger and better lives, most of us quietly reassure ourselves that our jobs are in some way useful. For my next three guests, making the world a better place is a given the very heart of the job they do. They're all men of the cloth. Will you please make them welcome from Dulwich Hill in Sydney, an Anglican minister, Father Dave Smith. Welcome, Dave. Thank you, mate. From Kubalup, Western Australia, a uniting church minister, Reverend Seelan Garlett. Welcome, Seelan. Thank you, mate. And from South Melbourne, a Catholic priest, Father Bob Maguire. Welcome, Bob. Thank you, Thank you. Wonderful to have you here. Let's start with the obvious stuff. You got into this job for the wardrobe, the booze and the chips, <laughs> right? Yeah, right? Of yeah, totally. Basically in that order, yeah. yeah. Bob, I'll start with you. In an average week, who comes through the doors of your church? What do they want? Well, we've got a bit of a problem in my place, South Melbourne, Andrew, because we've now become a, at the tail of two cities because the very rich are there and the very poor. Whereas in my, most of my first... Most of my 30 years, it's been the poor. Yeah. So, and we've got two ways of dealing with this, you see, because we've got my house where people are fed two or three times a week and where people can come for groceries and all of that, whereas next door is the magnificent building, the church, and the poor don't go in there. Why not? You see? Well, it's, no it's, not, it's, it's like the Aboriginal people, I suppose. They don't feel welcome. Ceylon, what about you in an average week? Who comes through your door? I deal a lot with the grassroots people. People who come against the hardship of drugs. People who really haven't got a handle upon alcohol. And um, pe people who are really searching um, for the, um, the crux of life and what they'd like to get out of it. Dave, what about for you? Who comes through your door now? Oh, gosh, yeah. A great variety of people. I mean, we're only a small parish, about 50 people, but... Uh, We'd be dealing with ten times that number in a week. We run a youth centre, we've got 250 kids there over the week, and uh, we run two unemployment programs. I run a fight club as well. We've got and people there for welfare, I and mean, there's an enormous range of people. I mean, again, it, it, people that reflect the area. big part of the job, of course, is writing the sermon, the Sunday sermon. How much of a chore is that, Dave? Oh, it's like, um, what they say, bloody Don Quixote fighting a windmill every time, you know, you get up from the last one, you get knocked down by the next one. Yeah. It is a bit like that. Bob, you, I you're... don't write them at all. You don't write them? <laughs> no. But I never have written them. What's but the secret? Uh, all, all I do is I get hold of what's going to be read from that book on Sunday, especially the gospel bit where Jesus said to his disciples, blah, 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 blah. And then I, in, the, in the light of the experience of the week... I think that's this week's reading, actually, isn't it? By the time <laughs> exactly Sunday comes, yeah. I've got the, the experience of the week and I've got those words as a framework and I mix them all up together and I chuck that at the, <laughs> the congregation. Does it, does it always make sense, Bob? It, it, see, oftentimes it doesn't make sense. It makes sense to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, all right. Well, that's all right. It's got to make sense to me. This is the problem, see, with us, with our vocation. Yeah. We, th we might be the only one in the whole building who knows really what the guts of that message is. Is it an effective message, then? Well, it's had an effect on me, and therefore <laughs> I've got to go and have an effect on the others. How am I going to get the others, like you, like Jesus said? Excuse me, I shouldn't be mentioning names. But <laughs> <laughs> We've heard of him round these parts. <laughs> I was warned beforehand. <laughs> if that, if that, that bloke kept saying things that were unpleasant and maybe unintelligible but absolutely necessary for somebody to take on board. Now, all I'm saying is in my, my vocation has been to take on board seriously what Jesus of Nazareth had to say and what he did. All That's right. my job. All right, then, to get the message out, have any of you ever delivered what you would consider to be a five-star, bell-ringing, road to Damascus, hallelujah, show-stopping <laughs> sermon? Have you ever had that moment? The funny thing is the ones that are good, you don't necessarily pick them. I mean, I've given sermons which I thought were crap and then some people come afterwards and they say, oh, I'm in tears and all this sort of stuff, yeah. you know, so... God works in funny ways. I suspect that's the experience <laughs> across the board. You must use that line so often. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. When nothing else makes sense. Yeah. Celan, how often do you read the Bible? Um, I try to be religious about it, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I try and do it every day. Yeah? Is that the same for you, Dave, you, Bob, every day? 
Pretty much. I mean, it's an occupational hazard. Yeah. You know, yeah. Do you guys know well, do you think? I hope so. If not, yeah. if not now, when? This yeah. is a setup. It is, actually. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Because, Bob, Seal and Dave, it's time to play. <laughs> Century. We came in good faith and now. <laughs> Gentlemen, let us take a good look at the good book. Come on down to Soul of the Century. What's the prizes? <laughs> Any particular one? Oh, the, the, the one with your name, right. Celine, you in the middle. Thank you so much. Dave, you at gotcha. the end. Uh, there are prizes. Are there prizes? There are of an eternal nature. <laughs> Test your buzzers, please. Dave. <laughs> Oh, there we go, good. <laughs> Celan? <laughs> Bob? <laughs> we are ready to go. Gentlemen. <laughs> are you right? Yeah. OK, question one. Matthew. Oh, I just wait a minute. You've got to push this if you know the answer. Is that right? Yes. Because we're humble, see? We yeah. usually no, let no. the other one go first. No, no, no. <laughs> None of your Christian rubbish here. You go in hard. <laughs> OK. <laughs> Matthew, chapter 1. Ezekiel begat Manassas, and Manassas begat Amon, and Amon begat Josias, and Josias begat... Anyone? <laughs> <laughs> this is the begatting bit, guys. This is the good stuff. <laughs> I'll give you a hint. Jack, Jack, Jack on. Jack on Naya. Got to press the buzzer, Bob. Sorry. <laughs> Not very impressive. <laughs> what was your answer? Jack and I. Correct, but you didn't press the button, so no points to you, Bob. I'm terribly sorry. <laughs> no, we'll give you ten for that. Well done. Question two. Listen carefully. Where does the following verse come from? So if you're the Christ, yes, the great Jesus Christ, prove to me that you're no fool. Walk across my swimming pool. <laughs> Bob. The life of Brian. <laughs> I'm terribly sorry, but anyone else like to have a go? Dave? I have a crack. That was Jesus Christ, superstar, part, supposedly King Herod. The Gospel of Sir Andrew Lloyd Webber and Tim Webber, Rice, exactly. Herod's song, well done. Oh, Ten points to you, Dave. How many people did Jesus raise from the dead in the Bible? <laughs> Bob? <laughs> Three. Can you name them? Your Lazarus. Yes, your Lazarus. Your, 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 your name, the bloke that was being carried out and his mother was a widow. The widow of Nain's son, correct. And uh, you reckon there's a third one? Yeah, there is. Uh, <laughs> well, I was and I took a punch, you see. Yeah, no, that's good. The third one. Closely related to Jairus. Himself. Jairus' daughter. Jairus' daughter. Oh, that's exactly. Yeah. Oh, look, Jairus's daughter. I'll tell you what, ten points to you, Bob, ten points to you, Sil, and ten points to you, Isn't Dave. You each got the last one. Lovely. <laughs> Lovely. All right, now let's just check our uh, scores here. Dave's on 40, yeah, Bob's yeah. on 20, Seal and uh, yeah, will be on 10 very shortly. Dave, uh, you are actually leading, so if you'd like to take a pick from our Fame Game board, there's nine famous Christians here. Our former <laughs> most evil rock singer in the world, now worshipper Alice Cooper, uh, rock star Madonna, now follows the Kabbalah faith, of course. Uh, the Pope's great George. mate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Cardinal George Pell. Not such a great mate of the Pope, uh, Sinead O'Connor, former star of the Flying Nun, Sister Betrill, the man doing God's work on our earth, George W. Bush, <laughs> Christian rock singer Bono, the man leading God's own country, John Howard, and the two-dimensional Christian, Ned Flanders. <laughs> Dave, choose any face. Ned Flanders. Ned Flanders it is. Who am I? This for 25 points and a chance to win the game. Well, here we go. First, one in First one in wins. I was born in Bethsaida, Galilee. Like many of my apostle mates, I liked to fish, but I gave that career away. I was one of Jesus' flatmates early in his career. I found the kid with the loaves and the fishes. I preached a bit in southern Greece. Mine didn't work. Ceiling, <laughs> I just saw you press your buzzer. Yeah. That's it. Mine didn't work. <laughs> God moves in mysterious ways, Bob. <laughs> Pull the wires out. Pull the wires out. Celine, well done, you. Oh. I am? Philip. No. So he serves you right. No. 
I'll give you the rest of the clues. I'm sorry, Celan. I preached a bit in southern Greece and got myself as far over as the bits now known as the Ukraine and Russia. I was eventually crucified in Greece. Bad day, that. Some reports say I was in a spread eagle position. My relics are now in Amalfi. I am... Bob. James. No, no, no. No, no, no. No, no, no. I'll give you a hint. I am... I'm thinking it's Andrew. Andrew is the correct oh, answer. Okay. 25 points to you, Dave. You are the winner of Soul of the Century. <laughs> Come on back, gentlemen. Thank you, sir. That's quite all right. 